So Alan is taking out the meshes that Thomas has individually wrapped. So these are the active meshes. And if we go around here, you can see uh, that we are using the one that we took the little piece out of yeah. there. Well, let's get this crick out of the corner if we can. Okay. So at least one of the meshes is as we tested it. But the other ones look pretty similar, I have to say. So whatever process he's using, it seems to be producing very... Um, consistent. Consistent is the right word. All right. So there are the three meshes that we'll be putting in. What do you think? Should we stagger them a bit or just roll them? Doesn't really matter. Okay. The hydrogen's going to get everywhere, isn't it? It is. And we'll roll them tight because it's a small tube they're going in. They'll spring back. So do you think you should send your gloves off for a recovery process? No. <laughs> no, I'll just reuse them when I make dinner. <laughs> but I don't want these strands getting caught in the... Let's just show that the length, they want to be in, to be centered in there. I, mean, I could roll them the long way, I suppose. What do you think? That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, the long way they fill end the end, but it just covers a good... But your heater is there, isn't it? So... It's, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be one, two, three, four, but about six layers because of the rolling. But the reason I held it up there is to see that I need to push it in. How far? How far. <clears throat> like that. About centered on the heater. Mm -hmm. And take this as a good. Okay. You want to get in closer with that? Uh, yeah, you need maybe. a flash to see down maybe. the tube. No, I can see in there. It's adjusted. So you can see it's all, all right. tightly packed in there. Yeah, no strands out of place? No strands out of place. We just Certainly. don't want them trapped in the ceiling surface. Yeah. Okay, and there's a new copper ring. And then so. to keep it from falling down too far, I put a couple of bolts in the bottom before. So with these uh, sort of conflap flanges, vacuum seals, you have that copper and uh, you're not meant to ever reuse them. No, take another shot close in if you can. There's knife edges on both yeah. surfaces and they <clears throat> cut into the copper. Knife yeah. edges right there. Because of obviously the uh, copper is ductile and it then pr provides a very good vacuum seal. trick is to get the, the copper disc up into the groove before I put any, any tension on it, any fasteners. I'm going to start with this one. Ooh. The washers aren't really critical just to let the nut spin a little more freely from torquing it. And we can put the rest of the fasteners in.
I try to do this whole process without disturbing the reactor too much. You don't want to displace the thermocouples. That might change their calibration, but they're pretty held pretty well uh, secured by the, the welded on clips there. So when you're doing this up, do you sort of take it in turns on the uh, various bolts? Yeah. Torque it down evenly, and you can see on the other flange that when they're fully torqued, the flanges should be close to meeting together. And uh, that sometimes requires heating the device up first and then torquing it. The heat tends to soften the copper and then it's easy to get more compression on it. Conflat is a wonderful technology. It's been used for, I guess, 50 years, 40 years for vacuum. It's reliable and repeatable. <clears throat> and the drill is you do opposite sides, alternate the opposite sides to make sure that the gap stays parallel. So whilst Alan is talking up those bolts, uh, here is a used conflat copper ring and you can see the knife line impressions in there and that provides the high vacuum seal. And here you can see the gap is closing, eventually it will look a bit like that. So thank you very much for your time, I'll see you in the next video.